On July 15, 1969, the Reverend Ralph Abernathy and members of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference's Poor People's Campaign gathered outside the gates of the Kennedy Space Center in protest of the vast sums diverted from social programs here on Earth to the technological marvel now pointed at the moon. To many Americans, the Apollo program represented the embodiment of the Enlightenment ideal of progress, an ideal grounded in the belief that all problems encountered in society were surmountable through the application of scientific principles. However, to the African-American protesters standing alongside Abernathy and to many other critics across the country, Apollo represented a turning away from the plight of the poor and with it the abandonment of previous gains of the civil rights movement. The intersection of the Civil Rights Movement and the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, on that July day at Cape Canaveral, Florida, was neither the first nor the last. During the decade of the 1960s, NASA became something of a laboratory for social progress. Actions such as President John F. Kennedy's order for equal employment opportunity in March 1961 and the creation of cooperative education programs between NASA and several historically black colleges and universities were representative of the concrete but limited engagement between the federal government and black graduates in technical disciplines. With the Apollo program, black graduates found the doors of economic opportunity gradually opening in many previously segregated occupations. White and black women also saw an increase in opportunities for themselves in the previously white, male-dominated fields of engineering and science. While the overall small increase in terms of numbers by the launch of Apollo 11 on July 16, 1969, left much to be desired, the pathways to new economic opportunity for black graduates and for women were enshrined in law and visible within the public discourse. 